Hello and welcome to today's video by the AM Academy. My name is Sven, and today I have another 3D printer with me, specifically the Z3 from Zax. Zax is a Turkish, ma Turkish manufacturer that just brought out its first two 3D printers, the X3 and the Z3. And I've got the Z3 right here in front of me, but it's really big, so I'm going to have to start unpacking it on the ground and then get it up on the table. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing now. All right, so I needed somebody else to help me put it up on the table, so that wasn't on camera. But uh, now that I've got it, I'll tip it over backwards, get this bottom part off, and then somehow hope to get the styrofoam packaging off as well. Uh, I recommend doing every one of these steps with two people, because then it's far easier than if you do it alone, but the other guy didn't want to be on video, so I'm stuck on my own. So uh, without further ado, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Alright, so I'm not sure whether that was visible on my face, but this thing is heavy. So 100% do this with two people, it'll so save you so much trouble, you won't break the styrofoam like I did, and it'll just be a much nicer experience to get this thing out of the box. But once you have it out of the box, man does it look nice. So it's this heavy because it's got a pretty solid uh, steel core frame uh, to make sure that it remains rigid and solid no matter what you do. What I like about these printers is they don't actually sit on four individual feet. Instead, they sit on two long ridges of rubber. Uh, so that makes it a lot easier, uh, a lot better in terms of stability. They don't wobble in any way. They stay nice and solidly on the table. Uh, in exchange, they can't be adjusted upwards or downwards. So uh, I hope you've got an even surface to place this on, which honestly, you should anyway. Okay. Then, I'm not going to rotate this one too much, because it's heavy as hell, but you can see it's got two actual glass doors, so I like that. These are real glass, tempered and whatnot, but glass. The sides are from um, plexiglass and the top is acrylic, or the sides are most likely acrylic as well. Now, I will break my promise I made just now and rotate it a bit. There's a USB plug here on the side. On the back, there is... Um, let me rotate more, because this one's actually got something interesting on the back. Unlike its smaller brother, this one has three Ethernet ports instead of just one. And that's because one is actually for connecting to your network, which is the Ethernet port on the right. One is for aux, which is, you know, external appliances that can plug in. And the third one is for the multi-material system that Zax is still developing. So you can then print with multiple materials because this on its own is a single nozzle printer. It's got an E3D V6 Titan hot end, so you can print really reliably, but only one material at a time or one color. This will let you combine materials and be more flexible with everything. On top of that, you can see that there is uh, this right here is where the spool holder will go. We'll unpack that later. And there will be an, an NFC reader. So you've got NFC chipped spools of material by Zax. And the printer will recognize what material that is. So there's an NFC chip here. There's an NFC reader there. If I put it on the printer, it'll read and recognize that. You don't have to use this system, though. So it's nice to have in, in the cases where you want it. It can provide some ease of use. but you're not limited to these NFC materials only. Instead, you can put any spool whatsoever you want into this printer. It is an open material system. Um, so that as a side note, you're not forced to use this. This printer has a print volume of 400 by 300 by 350 millimeters. So 40 centimeters wide, 30 centimeters deep, and 35 centimeters high. That's some serious print volume, so nothing to scoff at. If you ask me, then let's turn this thing back around so we can see the front. There we go. 
There's nothing on the other side that I still needed to show. On top, we've got a lid that is fully removable. I'm a little torn on this. I usually like hinged lids, so they're nice and out of the way and I don't have to put them down anywhere. On the other hand, you can fully remove this so you can then have nice and easy access to everything inside from above. Um, so I'm a bit split on that, whether I like it or hate it. Um, I'll just accept it as that's how it is. As I open this up, I can get the manual from underneath the belt plate. And uh, that would probably tell me what the next steps are and how to get started with this printer. But honestly, that's kind of boring. Why would I read a manual when I can instead just open everything up and do it myself? So what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the uh, transport safeties. There are three, no, there are two on the z-axis, one in the front left, one in the front right, um, front left, front right, and then three on the upper axes. There's one up here, one in the center, and one over here. And I'm just going to unclip all of those, and then we can start moving things around. So just clip them open for the z-axis. They're like little hinges, hinged mechanisms that lock. And then the other ones. And there's four, actually. There's one on each side of the printhead. So two small ones and two larger ones for the x and y axes. Uh, for the y-axis specifically, the smaller ones were for the x-axis. Let's put it that way. Okay, now that all my transport safeties are out, because the power cable is actually hidden underneath the belt plate, the first step that we need to do is manually lift the belt plate. Now this may feel wrong, but it's actually what you're supposed to do. So you carefully go, and I recommend one hand at the front and one in the back, and then you just lift it up a tiny bit. You may need some force for this, but you can lift it up. And now that I've got about halfway up, that's plenty to get at everything that is underneath. There's a little toolbox in there. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Then there's the power cord that I can now use to plug the printer in and then do the next steps. So let me plug that in at the back. And then there is a spool of material the ABS natural. So that's included with the printer. I've got a couple extra just so I can run some tests. And now we can remove the styrofoam because the styrofoam is actually so tall that the printer cannot home, which is what it'll try doing at the very beginning. So if you plugged in uh, the printer with a different power cord and turned it on, it'll have tried to auto home to the bottom. It won't have been able to do that due to the spool of filament and the styrofoam and everything being in there and it'll have been making weird noises and probably really scaring you. If that happened, don't worry about it. First step is to still force this plate upwards. It'll take more force, but it just needs to go out of the way so you can get at everything underneath because we need to remove that styrofoam, otherwise you're caught in the loop of trying to boot it, it locking itself up, and then you just do the same thing over and over. So instead, now that we've gotten everything out of there, now we turn it on and then it will rehome. And then the printer actually has an automated leveling system to get that bed in the correct flat position. And it'll have an automated bed leveling in the print head as well before the print, like a mesh leveling system, um, to really make sure that everything works fine. So just don't be that afraid of the printer uh, if you accidentally turned it on before you removed everything underneath, uh, it will take some force to move that bed out of the way and get at everything underneath. Um, and you won't break anything doing that. So now it'll go down, it'll touch the end stops. There's an individual end stop at the front left, the front right, and in the back. And um, all three of those need to be actuated at the same time for this bed to actually home to its natural zero position. The belt plate itself, is a magnetic PEI sheet. It's uh, mirror smooth on the surface, so you have a very, first, a very good first layer quality. Uh, it is the same on both sides, so if one side scratches, you can just flip it over. There are also uh, surfaces that are uh, structured, so you won't need as much glue to use with them. And of course, they're flexible, so it's very easy to get your finished prints off of them. The printer has uh, HEPA and activated carbon filters in the back, two of them, one on the left, 
one on the right side. It's got power loss detection. It's got a webcam and its own LEDs, as you can see. Uh, using the xCloud software, you can then remotely monitor and start prints and stop prints and do all that printer management stuff that you may want to use uh, a cloud software for. Uh, user interface is this touch display, about seven inches, I think it is. Uh, so that should give you plenty of space to do everything you need, like calibration and whatnot. Speaking of calibration, that would be the next step. Calibrate the printer, then start printing. These printers normally come pre-calibrated from the factory because they did pre test prints there, but it never hurts to make sure and just recalibrate it one more time before you start. Now let's have a look at this little toolbox that was included. Inside we can find a stick of glue, uh, some lubricant, and three hex keys that will hopefully give me access to everything in terms of maintenance inside this printer. A side cutter, always love getting more of those. Um, I've got a USB stick with the slicing software, and then I have uh, my spool holder. And my spool holder is actually extendable, so it can get uh, longer for bigger spools, or I can collapse it for smaller spools. And it's got like an oval thing at the back. I showed you the oval hole in the printer earlier. You would slot this into the oval at the back, then rotate it 90 degrees, and now it's fixed at the back of the printer. I don't want to turn the printer again, it's so heavy. Uh, but that's how you would fix the spool holder on the back of the printer, and then that's where you could put your spools. Also, I recommend keeping all these transportation safety somewhere so that if you need to move the printer or ship it anywhere in the future, you always have those uh, to make sure nothing breaks. Um, yeah, so I think that's just about everything for this. Did I have anything else I wanted to mention? Yes, I did. Uh, so I've heard that the passive heating of this printer is actually really good. The belt plate can go up to 110 degrees Celsius, the print head to 300. There is no active heating for this build chamber, but apparently the thermal insulation this provides is good enough that the temperature inside the build volume reaches about 60 degrees Celsius. And 60 degrees Celsius is plenty good enough to achieve really good prints with ABS, for example. So that gives me hope for the future. I haven't tested this myself. I've only heard about this. Uh, so I'll be looking forward to getting some tests in with this printer and really seeing what it's all about. And then maybe I can tell you more about this. Uh, so for now, my next step is going to be calibration, unpacking one of the spools, putting it on the back, loading the filament, and then actually getting to start a print. And I'm really looking forward to what it can do, but that'll be part of another video. So for now, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any more questions that you would want to ask me, please feel free to ask. Um, I'll also post a description link for the printer down below. And um, yeah, other than that, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.